Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Phosphorus Industries, Phosphoric Acid Production by Wet Processes. Before going into the details of today's lecture, we will have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we started discussion on uh, phosphorus industries, how it compares with uh, nitrogen industry, especially with respect to the growth, how it has grown, etc. those things we have seen. Then we started discussions on elemental phosphorus that is yellow versus red phosphorus, their properties, the differences, etc. we have seen. Then we started discussion on production of elemental phosphorus by electric furnace uh, process under which we have discussed the reactions, raw materials, quantitative requirements, process flow chart and description, major engineering problems, etc. we have seen. Then we started discussions on production of phosphoric acid. We realized that there are three important uh, methods are there. One of them is electric furnace process under which two different options are there, direct conversion at plant site and then oxidation and hydration of phosphorus near consumers market. The second method for the production of phosphoric acid is wet process. Under the wet process again two options are there strong sulfuric acid leaching process and then hydrochloric acid leaching process. Third one is blast furnace process which is no longer competitive. So for the production of phosphoric acid in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, you know phosphoric acid production using the electric furnace process that we have seen under which both direct conversion as well as the oxidation and hydration of phosphorus near consumers market we have already seen. In today's lecture we are going to discuss about production of phosphoric acid using wet processes. We start with strong sulfuric acid leaching process. Okay. Chemical reactions, main reaction is that calcium phosphate react with the strong sulfuric acid and water to give the phosphoric acid and gypsum. Side reaction is that calcium fluoride react with the sulfuric acid and water to give the hydrogen fluoride and gypsum. This hydrogen fluoride react with silica to give H2SI F6. Raw materials phosphate rock obviously we are taking as initial point and then strong sulfuric acid from contact process. From contact process we can get sulfuric acid up to 93-98 percent uh, purity. So that acid directly we can use here in this process. In Indian plants what happens you know we need uh, high grade imported ore because we understand we realize that you know uh, phosphorus uh, uh, resources are not available in India. So we are dependent on the import. So since we are doing importing it is better to take the high grade uh, imported ore because there is a possibility if you have a low grade ore then you know uh, mine rock impurities such as oxides of alumina, silica, iron and alkali minerals uh, may take place. Solubilization of uh, this mine rock impurities may take place with the ore and then that is going to hamper the process and de decrease the yield. So better to go for high grade imported phosphate rocks for the processes for the plants in India. In advanced countries what they do? They take even uh, a low grade ore and then uh, further improve its purity by uh, going through several uh, beneficiation processes which includes milling, screening, hydro separation, classification and flotation. Quantitative requirements for this process if you see, if you wanted to produce 1 ton of 100 percent phosphoric acid in 90 percent yield and 2.7 tons of gypsum because in this process you get both phosphoric acid as well as gypsum and then gypsum quantity is much higher compared to the phosphoric acid quantity in this plant. So accordingly the raw material requirements are phosphate rock having 32 percent P2O5 you need 2.5 tons, sulfuric acid 93 to 98 percent purity you need 2 tons, plant capacities usually 100 to 150 tons per day of 100 percent H3PO4. Now we uh, see the flow sheet here, 
how to obtain the phosphoric acid concentrated phosphoric acid using the wet process where uh, strong sulfuric acid leaching is taking place. Okay. So, here the phosphate rock whatever is there that you ground to 200 mesh and then take to a reactor to which strong sulfuric acid 93 to 98 percent uh, pure H2SO4 along with the recycle phosphoric acid is taken. Right? So, this recycle uh, phosphoric acid helps this uh, material to get into the reactor uh, comfortably. To this reactor the concentrated uh, sulfuric acid is allowed uh, using a automatic control uh, because you know the uh, ratio between rock and then sulfuric acid has to be properly maintained, has to be properly maintained and then that is very much uh, essential because you are producing low cost phosphoric acid and then using you know uh, strong sulfuric acid. So, it has to be uh, meticulously uh, utilized as well as it has to be recovered later again after the production of the process when you do the purification of the products etc. It should also be recovered as much as possible otherwise it has to be used for production of some other chemicals there in the plant itself. Otherwise this process is not going to be economically feasible if you are not uh, you know uh, meticulously using this H2SO4 uh, for the process as well as recovery, if not recovery utilizing for some other uh, chemicals fertilizer productions. Right? So, now here the reaction when reaction takes place whatever the heat of the reaction is there, so that, that has to be uh, controlled. So, for that cooling air is being uh, circulated to the uh, reactor. Now, the output of the reaction is nothing but what we understand from the reactions is primarily phosphoric acid and gypsum. Of course, there are other kind of impurities are also there as per the reaction, but primarily it is phosphoric acid and gypsum. So, this mixture is uh, taken to the traveling pan filter where we are using weak acid for washing. Weak acid is used for washing and then whatever the filtrate of uh, uh, this filter is there that is nothing but uh, weak uh, phosphoric acid that has been taken as a kind of a recycle here to this uh, you know reactor again. Okay. So, here what you do in this process almost 40 percent of phosphoric acid you get it by this filtration process. Right? 40 percent of phosphoric acid you get it and then you uh, further concentrate it in a single effect evaporator as shown here to increase its uh, concentration more than 50 percent anything up to 75, 80 percent as per your requirement and then store it. Right? So, here after that you know uh, because this is a traveling pan filter, so the other end what you get? You get a, a gypsum and then for washing of the acids etc., whether it is uh, unreacted sulfuric acid or you know uh, weak phosphoric acid whatever it present, you, you have to wash it. For that purpose you use hot water wash at the end of the or at the other side of the you know uh, traveling pan filter that is just before the collection of the washed uh, gypsum. Before collecting the gypsum you use the hot water for the washing of the uh, slurry so that to wash out the acids okay, and then take the almost pure uh, washed gypsum as a product here. This you can uh, take to gypsum plants for making of paints etc. or whatever the other uh, products that you can make from the gypsum for that purpose you can uh, you can take it by drying etc. Okay? Now, see the other option is that now you, you are getting you know uh, from here uh, traveling pan filter you are getting 40 percent H3PO4, you can take it as it is uh, if it is sufficient for your purpose otherwise you can concentrate in single effect evaporator using the steam. Right? So, uh, concentrated uh, phosphoric acid you can get from uh, uh, this single effect evaporator. Right? So, but now what happens? Uh, there is a, a problem of uh, you know uh, economy. Right? If you only do this much, then if you do not recover or utilize properly the H2SO4, etc., then it's not going to be economical process. So, then what what we do in general? 
this phosphoric acid is neutralized whether it is uh, weak acid or strong acid. It will be neutralized using the liquid ammonia and then uh, make up sulfuric acid uh, you know solution right and th there will be series of neutralizers uh, would be there this entire you know it depends on the how much uh, how many sections are required in a plant that depends on the quantities two to three neutralizing sections would be there. After this neutralizing section what you get from the bottom of the uh, last neutralization section you get a uh, uh, chemical fertilizers like you know ammonium phosphate, ammonium sulphate, etc. Those kind of mixed chemical fertilizers you get that slurry what you do you take it to a rotary granulator. To this rotary granulator you can also add potash crystals and then filler if anything are required. So when uh, this uh, slurry which is nothing but uh, mixed chemical fertilizer something like you know uh, ammonium phosphate and then uh, ammonium sulphate etc. this kind of thing. Right. So, these uh, this slurry along with the filler and potash are taken to the rotary granulator where the granulation of this mixture is takes place. These granules are taken to the rotary dryer to which air at 150 degree centigrade is supplied for the drying purpose. So, these dried granules what you do? You take it to double deck screens where you see the size requirement. If the granules are of sufficient size then you can take them as a product for the bagging. So, here the granules which are uh, bigger than the desired size they are uh, re-grinded and then sent back for the screening again whereas the fines are taken back to the uh, rotary granulator along with the filler and uh, potash crystals for the uh, further makeup of the size. Right? So, where, whereas the uh, air from the uh, rotary dryer that would be approximately 80 degree centigrade that may also be containing some dust, dust of this you know chemical fertilizers. So, you cannot uh, leave this air to the atmosphere as it is. So, then what you do? You take it to the cyclone separator from there you try to remove the dust from the air and then that air is sent, uh, is sent through a fume dust scrubber. If at all some more scrub uh, dust is remaining that would be scrubbed using the water and then clean air sent as a vent gas. Whereas from the bottom of the cyclone separator if any fines are there, you know uh, fine granules are there. So, they will be uh, collected and sent back to the granulator along with the filler and uh, potash crystal for the makeup of a granular size. Right? So, this way you can make use of a sulfuric acid without any wastages because you are getting weak acid as well as the concentrated phosphoric acid plus in addition to that one you are able to produce the mixed chemical fertilizers as well. Okay. So, the same uh, description is given here. Phosphate rock is ground to 200 mesh and fed to a chute where a recycled stream of weak phosphoric acid washes it into a reaction tank. Strong sulfuric acid is metered with automatic control which keeps the acid and a rock feed ratio at desired setting. So, single reactor can be designed by proper baffling and residence time and capacitance permit 98 percent conversion in 4 to 6 hours. If you have a single reactors, you have to react it, uh, you have to do the reaction for 4 to 6 hours. Right? And then proper baffling etc. should be provided or mixing thorough mixing has to be provided in the reactor. So, here you can get up to 98 percent of conversion. Some designs what happens you know you can have multiple reactors right you know 4 to 5 continuous mixing tanks can be used with slightly better efficiency of extraction by minimizing back mixing. Heat of reaction is controlled by pulling cooling air across the reactors. Gypsum phosphoric acid slurry goes to a traveling pan vacuum filter where 40 percent acid is removed and the cake is washed with water. Filtrate from the cake washing is returned to the reactor as weak phosphoric acid recycle. Gypsum is free filtering and cake thicknesses of about 2 inches can be readily obtained. Gypsum can either be dried for use in plaster, paints and cements or it can also be reacted with ammonium carbonates to produce ammonium sulphate which is a fertilizer and calcium carbonate. Either way it can be used. Dilute acid is concentrated in a single effect evaporator to any grades more than 50 percent acid. Most of the wet process acid is being converted to 
high concentration chemical fertilizers as discussed in the uh, flow chart. Uh, pyrophosphoric acid can be obtained by heating orthophosphoric acid to 250 degree centigrade. If you heat the orthophosphoric acid to very high temperature like 900 degree centigrade, then you can get metaphosphoric acid as well. Okay. Engineering problems, process design and then materials of construction. These are the two important parameters that one should be careful while designing this plant as well as operating this plant. Under the process design, fineness of grind, temperature and then control of sulfuric acid is important because you are uh, producing a phosphoric acid which is uh, less expensive compared to the concentrated uh, sulfuric acid. Using a expensive sulfuric acid, you are producing a uh, cheaper phosphoric acid, so then it has to be uh, properly mitigated, right? The uh, sulfuric acid utilization has to be done properly. So, that is again one of the important engineering process, uh, you know, engineering problem in such phosphoric acid production plants. Fineness of grind, grinding as we mentioned that, you know, size of the uh, uh, rock phosphate uh, after crushing, whatever you say, that is very essential, right? So, if it is bigger size, the complete conversion or you know, sufficient conversion may not take place. So, it has to be fine enough, right? If you do the fine enough, then grinding cost increases. And then we know grinding efficiency, efficiency of any third size reduction equipment for that matter is very poor. It is less than 20, 25 percent in general, right? Why? Because most of the power supplied uh, for the grinding of uh, this uh, ores is utilized for the operation running of the size reduction equipment itself rather than you know size reducing the uh, these rocks okay so uh, uh, if you go for uh, getting finer and finer uh, uh, mineral ore uh, from the big rocks then you know you are, uh, your grinding cost will increase okay so accordingly you have to make a judicious you know selection so that your you, you don't uh, cross economic uh, cost balance and then you produce financially you know economically feasible products by the plant. For that economic balance between grinding cost and then reactor fixed charges uh, are uh, very essential and then we can see here if you take annual cost per year, so grinding cost increases you know rather increasing exponentially increasing as you are going for a finer particle increasing mesh size in that, that means you are getting finer and finer particles, right? This mesh size is nothing but within one linear inch of, uh, you know, screen, how many openings are there? So, uh, 300 openings are there or 200 openings are there, 100 openings are there. If 100 openings are there, that means it is a bigger opening, 200 intermediate, 300 uh, smallest opening compared to uh, amongst these three. Right? So, if you are have going for a uh, finest particle, so then you know grinding cost exponentially increasing. Though if you have the finer particle, reactor cost decreasing actually, it is a good thing. Right? So, but grinding cost is very much higher and then grinding is uh, least energy efficient process. So, better what you do, you combine them and then total you see and then optimum one you consider. That is the reason here for this plant we have selected the materials are ground to 200 mesh size, the whatever, whatever the phosphate rock is there that have been ground to 200 mesh size because on based on this consideration. But is it the only one? The reactivity is also important factor. If you take the percentage of rock reacted versus, uh, versus the reaction time, if you have a uh, let us say uh, 200 mesh particle, so then almost complete conversion takes place you know by uh, 3 hours or 2 to 3 hours approximately within that time. Okay. You can see here, you know, most of the conversion takes place you know when the reaction time is approximately 3 hours or slightly more than 3 hours if you have a 200 mesh size particles. But if you have slightly coarser particles, not much coarser, slightly coarser, uh, coarser minus 100 to plus 150 mesh, right? 
what does it mean? It mean by minus 100 and then plus 150, minus 100 that means particle is retaining on this one and then passing through 150 in between average size this one. So, then under such condition you can see if you wanted to get the higher conversion more than 90, 95 percent you know the reaction time you know you can it's gone on if you ex extrapolate you know it may be several hours it will take. But here itself if you take you know uh, up to s double the time let us say you do you know up to 7 hours you do the reaction then you are not even getting 80 percent conversion you are getting approximately 70-75 percent conversion by this size particle. So, accordingly you have to select this one, this one not only the cost one but you know reaction time is also important. Okay? Because size reduction from 150 mesh to um, uh, 200 mesh is not going to become, uh, increase the grinding cost much but the reactivity is increasing drastically. So, then better you go for this. 200 mesh. Okay, this is the another reason that phosphate rocks are ground to 200 mesh if you are using strong sulfuric acid leaching process for production of phosphoric acid from this you know phosphate rock. Second one is the temperature. If the temperature is more than 100 degree centigrade, undesirable semi hydrates of uh, uh, calcium sulfate and then anhydrate calcium sulfate crystals are formed and then these are very, very difficult to filter out. Gypsum can be easily filtered out, but these uh, semi hydrates and then anhydrate calcium sulphate crystals are very difficult to be filtered out uh, to get the uh, acid from the slurry mixture. If the temperature is maintained to 80 degree centigrade, gypsum rhombic crystals uh, formation is predominant and then these are easily filtered and then washed as we have discussed in the flow sheet easily. Right. Control of sulfuric acid, actually if you have 1 to 1.5 percent uh, sulfuric acid uh, in this slurry, so it is going to be uh, good for the filtration process that has been found. If you have a 1 to 1.5 percent sulfuric acid, unreacted sulfuric acid in the slurry of uh, phosphoric acid and gypsum, so it is going to be advantageous. How it is going to be advantageous? It makes filtration of gypsum easier. Further small percentage of sulfuric acid can be tolerated for fertilizer grade acid also because whatever unreacted sulfuric acid uh, or recovered sulfuric acid in the process is there. If you are not using for the chemical fertilizer production as we have discussed uh, in the process uh, uh, flow chart, you can sell, sell it to the fertilizer industries and they can use it for uh, production of fertilizers where small percentage of sulfuric acid uh, is sufficient enough. You do not need to have 98 percent sulfuric acid in general. If purer product is desired then excess H2SO4 is eliminated with a slower filtration rate uh, becoming the result. Next materials of construction, this is again important parameter because wherever acids are there materials of construction becomes very important. Reaction tanks constructed of steel and then lined with acid proof brick. All air vent systems are PVC coated with steel. Filter because now the filter is playing very important role here. Yeah? The filter is uh, separating the phosphoric acid and then gypsum from it. Then only you are able to use the phosphoric acid and then gypsum separately for different products. So, this is again very important and then since the slurry phosphoric acid is also there and then some, some amount of uh, unreacted uh, sulfuric acid is also there. So, because of that one the material of construction for this filter is also very essential, very important for this type 316 stainless steel that is SS316 with uh, polypropylene filter cloth and rubber lined vacuum receivers of steel are uh, provided. Storage tanks are usually rubber lined steel tanks are used. Now, we see phosphoric acid production by wet process which is the second one hydrochloric acid leaching. Okay. Here the reactions if you take calcium phosphate react with the hydrochloric acid and water to give a mixture of phosphoric acid and then calcium chloride solution. It is a solution and then it is mixture there. So, then you from this mixture you have to extract phosphoric acid. So, uh, extraction 
has to be done. So, some solvent is required and then for this purpose butyl or amyl alcohols are used as solvents. Okay? So, now these, these are again expensive solvents to be frank and then you are uh, and then you are you know you know uh, producing a cheaper phosphoric acid. So, then recovery of the solvent is again important that we are going to see in the process anyway. Side reactions, calcium fluoride uh, react with the hydrochloric acid to give hydrogen fluoride and then this react with silicon to give this H2SIF6 and then water, right. See this all these things are you know present uh, uh, in the rock because we are taking the rock. Phosphate rock when you take actually it is a uh, fluoropatite uh, you know uh, mineral it is also having the fluoride. So, all these reactions are possible, but primarily this is the reaction that you should concentrate and then you should make sure that this reaction progress in at a uh, better pace compared to the other reactions. So, according the process operation in terms of the uh, control of the flow rates of the acids etc., temperature etc., temperature etc. has to be done so, so that this reaction predominates. Raw materials obviously phosphate rock and then hydrochloric acid and then organic C4 to C5 alcohols which act as a solvents for the extraction of uh, this uh, phosphoric acid from the solution of phosphoric acid and calcium chloride. In order to avoid excessive acid consumption, phosphate rock of uh, high P2O5 content more than 30 percent is preferred. Hydrogen chloride gas or concentrated aqueous uh, hydrogen chloride more than 30 percent purity as waste or byproduct acid is used for this process and then organic C4 and or C5 alcohol solvents are used to extract phosphoric acid from calcium chloride solution. Quantitative requirements if you see basis 1 ton of uh, 100 percent pure phosphoric acid in 98 percent yield if you wanted to produce, phosphate rock more than 30 percent that is 32 percent P2O5 if you are using 2.3 tons required, hydrochloric acid uh, if you are using 100 percent pure then 1.4 tons of uh, hydrochloric acid is required, solvent makeup solvent butanol or amyl alcohol 3 kg are required, flocculating agent 0.4 kg required, plant capacities 15 to 150 tons per day for the production of 100 percent pure phosphoric acid. Now, flow sheet uh, we discuss first then we go to the process description which is the description of this flow sheet itself. Here in this process whatever the phosphate rock is there that is ground to 20 mesh size and then sent to a dissolver where uh, makeup uh, HCl along with the makeup water etc are uh, uh, provided for the proper mixing right. So, in the mixer whatever the reaction takes place right and then you get a H3PO4 and then CaCl2 phosphoric acid and then calcium chloride solution along with the impurities you get here. So, this mixture what you do? You take a series of a uh, washing uh, thickness, 2 to 3 thickness are there, right. So, in that one you take and then do the processing, right. Here what you do? The mixture when you take uh, to the first thickener, overflow whatever is there that is primarily having H3PO4 and then calcium chloride primarily. That overflow is taken to a series of extract uh, extractors where the extraction of a uh, phosphoric acid is taking place using the uh, makeup solvent that is C4 or C, C5 alcohols. Okay? Whatever the solids uh, from the bottom of uh, first thickener is there that is taken to the second thickener, right? Whatever, uh, whatever the overflow from the uh, second thickener is there that is uh, having mostly uh, HCl acid or uh, some un, uh, or some traces of H3PO4 CaCl2 may also be there. They all taken as a makeup and then sent back to the mixer. Then the slurry or the solids from the bottom of the second uh, thickener is taken to the third uh, thickener, right? So whatever the overflow 
of the third thickener is there, so that is going to the second thickener, right? And then solid residue uh, is collected from the bottom of the third thickener, okay? Overflow of the first thickener is primarily having uh, phosphoric acid and calcium chloride solution mixture, so that is taken to the extraction unit, a series of extractors, whereas the underflows from the thickeners are primarily having the solids with uh, some traces of uh, some minor amount of uh, HCl. So, those things are taken to the subsequent uh, second and third uh, washing thickeners. There may be some, some plants there are only two thickeners, some plants more than three thickeners are also there, right? Overflows from these thickeners are, you know, from the third thickener, overflow is uh, taken to the second one and then from the second thickener, whatever the overflow is there, that is taken as a makeup HCl and then sent back to the mixer. Okay. Now, whatever the overflow of the first thickener is there, that is taken to a extractor number A, right? There are uh, batteries or series of extractors are there, A, B, C and then D are designations we have given. This overflow from the uh, first uh, thickener is primarily having uh, the solution of calcium chloride with the H3PO4 mixed in. So, that solution is taken here and then to this extractor A, this makeup solvent, uh, butyl or amyl alcohol uh, solvent is provided from the top, right? So, from here uh, first extractor, uh, whatever the raffinate is there, that is taken to the last extractor uh, D, whereas the whatever uh, extractant is there, that is taken to the uh, second extractor, right? From here. Uh, whatever the uh, uh, raffinate is there, that is taken back to the first extractor along with the calcium chloride and H3PO4 solution, whereas the extractant from the second extractor is going to the uh, third extractor as feed. From the third extractor, primarily you get, you know, almost pure H3PO4 solution as a you know, uh, product and then that is taken uh, to a triple effective operator because it may also be containing some amount of HCl. We are saying that calcium chloride has 3 PO4 solution, but some amount of HCl and other impurities may also be there that we are all clearly understand it, okay? So, that uh, here after this uh, third extractor, whatever the uh, solution that you are getting, H3PO4 uh, is the primary content and then some traces of HCl may be there. So, those traces are the minor impurities of HCl are removed in triple effective operator, right? So, in the first uh, effective operator, weak HCl is recovered and sent as a makeup solvent to the mixer. From the second effective operator, concentrated, uh, concentrated HCl uh, you get that again you take it as a kind of a makeup uh, for the mixer. And from the third effective operator bottom, you will be getting phosphoric acid. So, this H3PO4 you get here is having 80 percent purity, okay? Iron and arsenic kind of impurities, whatever uh, possible because of the rock, they are also in limited quantities like in few ppms, okay, as shown here, right? So, here from the uh, fourth extractor, whatever the solution is there, that is primarily calcium chloride solution th along with the solvent, that is taken to a steam stripper where solvent is recovered and then sent back to the first uh, extractor for the continuation of the process as shown in the flow sheet, okay? This is the uh, process for the production of uh, phosphoric acid concentrated phosphoric acid using hydrogen chloride leaching process. Now, we see the description of the process here. Phosphate rock is ground to pass a 20 mesh screen. This is then fed into a dissolver where an acid stream of concentrated HCl along with makeup wash water from the counter current decantation system is added. Fumes of CO2 uh, HF and HCl are scrubbed for acid recovery that uh, is shown here. Whatever the fumes of uh, uh, HCl, HF and CO2 are there, they are taken to the acid recovery for the recovery of acid, 
then mixture is fed to a series of decantation or thickener units with overflow from the first settler moving to the counter current solvent extraction operation. This overflow contains primarily H3PO4, CaCl2 and then HCl. Okay. Solids underflow goes to 2 to 3 washing thickness. Extraction of uh, H3PO4 plus some free HCl is done in a battery of mixer settlers. In the first one calcium chloride and then calcium fluoride retained in aqueous phase where the extract is again passed through several more mixer settlers uh, B and C as we have seen in this flow chart. In the B extractor it is for removal of it is for removal of uh, traces impurities of uh, calcium fluoride or calcium chloride whatever are present which are co-extracted and the extractant is aqueous reflux from the next unit transfer extractors. C extractor is the one where water extracts H3PO4 and HCl from solvent phase and washed solvent is recycled to a final series of mixer settlers where the balance of HCl is extracted from the raffinate phase of extractors A. This acid free brain solution is sent to steam stripping for solvent recovery so that that solvent can be used in the first thickener again for the uh, extraction process and then cycle continues. Aqueous acid raffinate from C is separated and concentrated in a triple effect evaporator to give three different overhead streams as below. First uh, one alcohol water overhead flash and from the first effect which is condensed and returned to the extractors A. Dilute HCl from second uh, effect and then concentrated HCl from the third effect you can get and then this concentrated HCl is returned to acid makeup. Bottoms from the third effect is the final product which is nothing but phosphoric acid 80 percent purity. Major injuring problems if you see uh, some of them like you know solvent recovery as we mentioned you are using expensive solvent to produce low cost uh, uh, acid. So, the recovery of solvent is very much essential then materials of construction wherever the acids especially strong acid like you know concentrated sulfuric acid is there then material of construction is another important factor to be considered. Then waste disposal lot of solids is being uh, generated how, how are you disposing these are the problems in addition to the other engineering problems like you know so under solvent recovery use of relatively expensive solvent in producing low cost acid means careful attention to design and operation of solvent handling equipment is required. Materials of constructions all sections of the plant must be HCl resistant which require rubbers, rubber lined or PVC lined mild steel or rigid PVC equipment. However, rigid PVC equipment is recommended. For evaporation and steam stripping equipment impervious graphite is specified. Waste disposable problems of disposing of uh, calcium chloride aqueous effluent and then siliceous uh, rock residue become acute where lagooning is not allowable. So, this is another problem one should carefully consider how are you disposing this uh, liquid effluents and then solid wastage. Now, coming to the economic evaluation of phosphoric acid different factors one should consider capital investment comparison acid versus electric furnace processes which one should you use. Three processes were there blast furnace process is no more uh, competitive now you have two processes electric uh, furnace processes and wet processes which one should you use that is very essential right. Uh, although uh, almost for four decades or five decades this uh, electric furnace process dominated over the wet process. However, nowadays whatever the plants that are available for the production of phosphoric acid they are primarily based on the wet processes. This is because capital investment compared to electric furnace plant the, uh, wet, wet process plants you know they required less capital investment. 
So, that money probably you can uh, make use for a uh, high grade rock uh, you know uh, required by the wet process. Then lack of uh, need for high purity acid because whatever the phosphoric acid you produce primarily more than 90 percent of it is being used for the fertilizer production. And then for fertilizer production you do not need si high, such high purity acids actually. Whereas, this electric furnace method it produce, produces very high purity acid, okay? that much high purity acid is not at all required if at all if you are using this acid for the fertilizer production. So, this is another reason that it is better to go for wet process. Then possibility of producing ammonium sulphate from gypsum byproduct in H2SO4 plant is there which is missing in the electric furnace plant. So, that is one. So, this is a uh, wet process or acid process versus electric furnace process. Now, you realize that because of these factors wet processes where uh, leaching of uh, you know uh, strong and weak acids are possibilities are there. So, now within the wet process which one you use right whether you go for H2SO4 process or HCl process. HCl process is only economical where there is excess chlorine and a scarcity of native sulphur. So, obviously in India that is the issue so then we can go for HCl process. So, if that is at all not a problem for a given plant you know if they are already having you know H2SO4 uh, from the other sources other plants. So, then selection has to be done based on the cost how much are you how at what cost are you uh, you know getting this H2SO4 or HCl for the production of a phosphoric acid. So, that based on that parity price of these two you have to select otherwise you know both of them are almost same. Plant location comparison with exception of acid produced from uh, phosphorus at or near consumer plant both wet processes as well as uh, uh, electric furnace pro processes are located in the region of phosphate rocks because we understand this you know uh, you know phosphate uh, rock as well as you know phosphorus these things are very poisonous and then uh, often the uh, technicians labor working in the plant they get ill because of uh, inhaling this uh, 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 phosphorus you know uh, vapors in the that are present in the gases though they are present in the minute near the plant you cannot avoid them anyway. So, because of such reasons these are located at the phosphate rocks. Rock beneficiation is required for upgrading low P2O5 uh, rock in the wet process where high purity acid is required for all uses except the triple superphosphate fertilizer production that we are going to uh, discuss in the next lecture. Byproduct usage what happens in calcium chloride uh, effluent whatever you are getting it is it has been found that some amount of uranium is present. So, extraction of uranium at rates of 0.1 to 0.2 kg per ton of rock is potentially attractive for wet processes. This appears as an impurity salt in H3PO4 liquor from gypsum filter and can be extracted by precipitation or solvent extraction method. References for this uh, lecture the references are provided here, but the entire lecture is prepared from this reference book uh, C. L. Dryden that is outlines of chemical technology edited by Gopal Rao and Marshall third edition. All the details presented in this lecture can be found in this reference book. Thank you. Thank you.